Hello friends, my name is Dave Miller. And I'm Nile Spain. And we're your fuck buddies. We are a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky sexy situations and turn them into sexy sticky situations. Simply put, we find questions either online uh, or from our lovely listeners and we answer them on the topics of sex and dating. It is very warm. Also, I apologize in advance. I am stuck in this closet with a very, very rowdy, anxious cat boy. Yeah, he's been he's been chirping and vibrating and rumbling and and batting wires and and that's only the last ten minutes. So who knows what kind of cat antics we have in store for you? We usually don't record this early, so usually he's in his like little food coma, but he has not been fed yet, or at least mm-hmm. like you know his his mid meal or his midday snack. His mid meal. His mid meal. Um, he hasn't had second breakfast yet. Exactly. So he's got strong, strong boy energy right now. Mm-hmm. I just had a shit ton of like uh, cold brew, which I have more than I should have, honestly. So uh, that's homemade. So you never know how much caffeine's in there. So I'm fucking riding high. I'm this vibing. Is cold. This is cold coffee, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to put like an obscene amount of coffee grounds in to like brew it from cold water. And like when you're done, it's just so caffeinated. So let's get going. All right, let's do it. Are you ready for some Twitter drama? Ooh, yeah. Hell yeah, I am. So this is kind of like sex news, kind of a question, kind of just a story that we're going to fucking discuss because there was a bunch of Twitter drama and like a new thing that's really popular on Twitter is a uh, subtweeting where you like tweet about something, but you don't like sp- it's, it's kind of like being passive aggressive where you make like these comments and you're talking about it, but you don't actually ever say what you're talking about. So everyone kind of has to figure out like what you're actually talking about. And then people are like, so MSN hmm? handles like MSN names, pretty much kind of, you're just being really fucking vague. You know what I mean? Um, so a lot of sub tweets were going around about, it took me a while to track down as a result, what was actually happening, but there's a person who I won't name, but they have an upcoming novel coming out and they're like, they're not unknown, right? They have enough of a Twitter following and the presence and all this shit. So she posted uh, a tweet about like a week ago. And it says, last night, a personal tragedy reminded me that life is uncertain and too goddamn short. So I booked a plane ticket and I'm about to fly across the country to tell the love of my life how I feel. Wish me luck. And don't wait another day to tell those you love that you love them. Okay. Then it ends 19 hours later uh, with, well, this is me in my shitty hotel room after getting rejected. I don't know whether to be sad or angry, but I'll live to love another day. Hopefully that love will be for someone who values it. Sorry to disappoint you, Twitter. And then- She leaked the name of the guy after this like blew up, right? So she leaked the name of the guy and did a whole bunch of like articles and interviews and which I think is really shitty because it then turns out that the guy they had dated like not even like exclusively. They had like seen each other for like three weeks and he had said that he didn't want anything more serious. They also live on other ends of the fucking country Mm -hmm. Um, and he had ended things with her and then she was like, okay. Someone died in my family. I'm going to surprise him by flying across the country, showing up on his doorstep and ignoring that. And like the whole internet's like, oh, this idiot one day, like you're and she, her exact tweet at the end is like, yeah, I don't know whether to be sad or angry, but I'll live another day. Hopefully that love will be for someone who values it. What, do you, what are your thoughts on this situation, Dane? So I think we've, we've kind of talked about this of like your expectations aren't like you're you're allowed to have expectations it's usually stupid to to do it but like other people aren't aren't meant to just fill in the gaps of like what you want them to do it's like this guy is a sentient human being who has his own free will and it's like despite the fact that yeah in your a book you may have written or in a movie you might watch this would be the end of the movie where you you know run up to his doorstep drenched in rain and proclaim your love to him and he's like oh damn yeah me too but that's not life 100 percent. and like even if you know feelings were different which again it's kind of shitty to completely ignore someone being like look this isn't going to work out i don't want anything more serious it's like someone dying in your family doesn't change their situation you know what i mean if it had been the opposite if you were the one who was like hey i don't want this to work out and then you change your mind you you'd have a better chance of succeeding i wouldn't yeah. say it's 100 percent, but even then Grand gestures like this, you put someone in such a shitty position and 
it's totally unfair to put your put them in that position and then blame them because you did all this effort that they weren't consulted on, right? Like it's not his fault you flew across the fucking country. You didn't yeah. consult him. You it can't be then a- be like, "Wow, I flew all the way here, you asshole." It would be a very different story if there was like some sort of like pre-existing communication prior to. Like if he was like, "Oh yeah, I've kind of regretted it." And then you get there and like he's married. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, "Okay, yeah, sure. Then you're allowed to be angry." But if you just go there expecting high romance, then like, sorry, it didn't pan out. That's life. Mm-hmm. Like and even even if like there was some kind of like possibility, like maybe you guys were talking and it's it's not dead, but you know, and maybe there's a little flirtiness or whatever going on. Ten hours of a flight to show up on someone's doorstep is still very fucking intense. By all means, shoot your shot if you want to. But do it in a way that's not going to screw somebody over, put them in a really awkward position, and also put yourself out so badly. Like, this could have been solved by a message or a phone call. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Same result, but everybody's feelings are solved. Or, like, feelings are, like, so much more protected in that situation. Also, guess what? Turning around and fucking leaking his name to the press and telling everyone on Twitter, that's a shit move. That's that's the thing that I want to talk about. Because you essentially, like, dox this dude... Because, oh, 100%. like, this is, you've essentially, like, set a precedent of being like, hey, if you reject me, I'm going to send my masses after you. Because mm-hmm. I assume this and, guy probably got fucking hit on oh, social media and Instagram and all that shit. Yeah, guess what? <laughs> she was getting masses. There were 4.6 thousand comments on the, like, I got rejected, blah, 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 being like, yo, fuck that guy, blah, blah, blah. Like, a lot of them, to be fair, and that's why I saw it, was uh, most of the people, like, subtweeting about it were like, this is pretty fucked up. Like if a guy did this and then started blasting the girl on social media and, you know, ignored her rejection and didn't take her ending the relationship and and then did all this thing, he would be completely lambasted or lambasted or however you fucking say that word. Whereas like with her, she gets all these pity and like, everyone's like, Oh, you did the right thing. It's like, no, it's, it's shit. You can't just ignore someone else's input in the relationship put them in this horrible position of like just showing up on their doorstep and then blast them online and dox them. And you know, it, it's pretty messed up. Yeah. Cause like, again, you're setting the precedent of like in your future relationships, if someone like, you know, happens to Google you or find out about this, <laughs> this stuff, it's like, Oh cool. So if, if things don't go exactly your way, are you going mm-hmm. to then just trash me? Like just ruin my fucking life because that sucks. Yeah. It's kind of like, just having somebody pointing a gun at you in the background for the whole of your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a shitty, terrible thing to do to somebody. Let's remove the fact that this person is a famous author or at least well-known author, like removing that aspect from it. You still haven't done anything right. You know what I mean? It's like, even if you were to post something like, even if this is like an unknown person and she posted this Mm -hmm. online or you told your friends and everything and now all all of your, all of her friends hate this guy or or send him abuse or whatever. It's like, that's still a really shitty thing to do to someone of being like, either do exactly what I want you to do, or Mm -hmm. you're going to be verbally assaulted online. There's a total difference. If like, he had done something wrong or whatever, which again, like we don't always have the ins and outs. So maybe there's something that hasn't been released, but again, she's been getting a lot of shit since. And like, she didn't see any problem with sharing his name online and sharing a lot of personal things. So I'm sure if there was something that would make her position look better, she probably would have shared it by now. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Grand gestures. Like this is movie thinking and movies like porn should not be applied to relationships, at least healthy relationships. Grand gestures like this, they are only in, like, any way not toxic in very specific situations. Even showing up on someone's doorstep with the weight of, like, I dropped everything, I came here, 10-hour flight, like, I'm just here. Like, it's so hard to turn someone down in that situation. I would also just be like, well, I'm in the middle of, you know, a Rainbow Six Siege game. (laughs) So can you just, like, hang out a second? Because, you know, it is a clutch win right now, so... I've literally had a girl show up on my doorstep before uh, having asked a friend like where I lived and like she's like, oh, I got this takeout, like blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you you can't just do that. But yeah. again, for me, and, and maybe this was stupid, probably was, I felt terrible turning them away after they'd come again quite a while. It was like an hour bus ride into the city at least. Um, and then to, you know, fucking subway from downtown up to where I live and all this shit. 
So it's like I let them in and then they stayed the night because they'd know where to stay. And it's like all this shit I didn't want to do, but it, it's like you're being like held up at gunpoint. It's like you have the two choices and it's like you kind of acquiesce to like these demands, which you feel guilty to not do or you're an asshole. Because far as like, yeah, I, I don't want you showing up unannounced. I'm not hungry. You know, go travel another two hours back home. Fuck you. Like, I'm sure people were like, hey, you're a dick. Yeah. You know? So I just I feel for this guy and people think life isn't a movie. Grand gestures can be cool, but like you really have to make sure you're not extorting someone for like, you know. The thing is, I like movies have it backwards, kind of. I think grand gestures are great if you're in a relationship with someone. Mm-hmm. Because like, you know what I mean? Like going out of your way to prove to your partner that you are currently with and are you know both of you are aware of the fact that you guys are in a relationship and then doing something extravagant for them i think Mm -hmm. is is a super nice thing because there isn't the pressure of them being like oh i have to decide whether or not how i feel about you like at the drop of a hat they know Mm -hmm. how they feel about you again with all the weight of the effort that you've put in right yeah Because, like, walking down the street to say that to someone, it's like, no. Okay, you go home. Ten-hour fucking flight to a place you probably haven't booked accommodation because you assume you're going to be staying with them. Like, that that's a lot of shit to then be like, yeah, I'm sorry you wasted the money and the time and the journey and you're here. And no, you can't come in. And no, you can't stay over. Go buy accommodation and then go home in shame. Like, but also tweet about it and fucking drop my name to the press. Yeah, I don't guys don't do this. It, don't. By, like I said, by all means, if you have a partner that you're, you know, both consciously aware of the relationship you're in, <laughs> by all means, make a grand gesture. That's fine. But if you think that a grand gesture is like at the beginning and end of a relationship, that's not the time for grand gestures. Though, like the time for grand gestures are in the middle when you're both on the same page mm-hmm. to to drop it at the beginning of a relationship is unfair because you're then putting all kinds of pressure on them to make a decision on how they feel. And if you try to do it at the end of a relationship, you're almost blackmailing them to stay with you mm-hmm. because you put in all this effort, which is such a shit thing to do if they want to leave. Just just cool it. Life's not a movie. As much as we would love to have these, you know, fairy tale endings, the thing you have to remember about movies and books is those people's lives don't end when the credits roll or you close the book. Like, there's still a very good chance that these characters break up in four years or get a divorce. You know what I mean? Like, everyone thinks that, oh, they, they're together. Great. It's a happy ending. But, you know, statistically, chances are the heroes at the end of every romantic comedy probably break up. Wow, Dan, you can't drop that realness on us. <laughs> Isn't that a shit thing to think about? But like, it's eh, true. Who cares? <laughs> the thing is, like, why do we think that the relationships the person had prior to are, you know, the doomed ones? Like, just because we've seen this one from beginning to end doesn't really make it a, a difference in, in the grand scheme of things. Like, mm-hmm. you might. And also the, the idea that, like, when you're in the, a relationship with, quote unquote, the one, it lasts forever. It's like, no, sometimes relationships just end. Because yeah. you guys have changed as who you are. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this is a whole different subject. So the one thing I would say is that like in this situation, it still could have worked out fucking great. If you have the time, ability, and desire to go to travel to see this person that you really like, that you think there's a chance with, you can fucking text them or call them and just be like, hey, look, I really want to give this another shot. Like, I really like you. Um, if you're down, like... I, I can fucking get a plane ticket today and we can hang out tomorrow. Like, you know, I'm reaching out. I just want to like, let you know, blah, 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 blah. And then if they say yes, this is great. With a very simple step, you've turned this shitty possibility and the, the, like the question and all this mystery and you don't know what into still a super romantic, super nice, great time that presumably you'll both fucking really enjoy. And like looking back, it'll still be a great story. It'll never be like, oh, wait, you actually told him you were coming? Ugh, ruined it. As opposed to showing up, being miserable, wasting time, money, putting them in an awkward position. You know, there's there's literally no difference apart from the fact that you're making sure they're chill. And the thing is, they could have work. They could have friends with like plans with a friend. You know what I mean? They could have all this, these things. It's like some plans aren't easily droppable. So you could show up and they might have the best of intentions. But it's like, yeah, I have to go to like a work thing for the next fucking 10 hours. Like, what are you going to do? Anyway, let's get some questions. Okay. All right, we got we got a nice. Let's start off with a with a user submitted question. Ooh. This is by Alan, Agent Charleville. So, what is the deal with people putting their Instagram handles on their dating profiles? I've had several occasions where I follow someone on Instagram from a dating site, even if we didn't match, and end up connecting with them through DMs at a later date. Some of these encounters have even end in date ended in dates or sexual encounters. 
I was recently speaking to some friends who were very shocked by this and thought it was not acceptable behavior to follow someone if you hadn't already matched. What are your guys' thoughts? If someone puts their Instagram handle on their their Tinder bio, I assume they want people to follow them. A hundred percent. Like, why else would you do it? I know, like, like, I know there's a way to like link your thing to show more photos and stuff, but like. Mm-hmm. If you don't want people on Tinder to follow you on Instagram, don't share your Instagram with the people on Tinder. It's that simple. Yeah, a hundred percent. I the only two reasons I could see for putting it on there is one, just like as you said, get more followers, or two, to like prove who you are and like show people more. But either way, it's like, why would you then expect them to go through and not follow you if they didn't want to? You know what I mean? If you have so, an open profile, anyone in the fucking world can come follow you anyway. So no, I think there is a like uh, a line to be drawn in the sand of being like, if they don't match with you to don't treat Instagram like it's Tinder, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't think you should, especially if the, if it's cause I I, Tinder used to, I can't remember if it's still, but like you can like actually integrate Instagram into your profile. So like, as you scroll down, you can see the the Instagram feed. So I don't think if if someone's done that, that, If someone's done that, I don't think you can be like, well, they didn't match me. So now I'm going to go to Tinder and be like, hey, what up, cutie? Mm -hmm. Like, I think I think that shouldn't be encouraged. And I don't think that is what people are hoping for, unless it because there is a ton of profiles being like, I'm never on here. Message me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's like, okay, great. You have you have permission to do this. I think unless there is explicit permission to do that, I don't think you should message people on other social media, like private social media as if it's a dating app. Yeah. So it's funny. My girlfriend has a story where she had seen a guy like swipe left on him and then he found her. She didn't have her Instagram linked or mentioned, but he found her on Instagram and was like, hey, I saw you on Tinder and like we didn't match lol. And then started sending her really creepy messages. And it's one of her like, hey, look at this big creep stories. And it is totally a different scenario than this. Right. And it's also so I think there's like three levels to this. If someone has their Instagram on their page, just like straight up, like, here's my Instagram. I would imagine they are, you know, they want you to follow them. You know, I'm pretty sure we can all agree on that. Um, If it's just linked at the bottom through like the extra pictures, I think that's like in between the two scenarios. And if they just swipe left on you and you're like, well, shit, got to keep trying. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't like fucking MacGyver. Or, you know, like piece together, beautiful mind style, Sherlock style. Be like, well, she's wearing a, you know, University of British Columbia sweatshirt in this picture. And mm-hmm. in this picture, we see that this is in the background. And these people have this kind of like. Don't do and when I look her up, I know that there's eight people of this name who go to BC, you know, like. Yeah. No, because that is inherently creepy because you've yeah. already kind of been rejected with the swipe. So now you're like with full knowledge that you're not going to be successful there, you're like tracking them down and pursuing them in this awkward way. So get rid of that. That's out. Third option is just a no go. If they have their thing on their profile and you're sending them a message that's, you know, not fucking creepy and you're willing to accept if they either don't reply or say no. Sure. You know, I think that's what we've said about DMS in general. It's like reaching out to people you don't really know. It's kind of creepy and weird. But at the same time, if you're polite and you don't fucking get weird about it, sure. Yeah, I mean, I've I've actually done this myself. They were like, oh, like, do you have an Instagram so I can see if you're like a, a person? And I was like, well, I don't really like sharing my social media, but like, yeah, sure. So I follow or she followed me. And then I was like, well, I follow her back, whatever. But we never actually like met up or whatever. And then one day, one of her stories was something like a cute cat or something. And mm-hmm. I messaged her on the story and we got talking from there. But like prior to that, we hadn't really chatted a whole lot. Like we sent maybe like two or three messages on Tinder and then that was it. And I assumed, you know, she got a better look at me and wasn't interested. I was like, OK, cool, whatever. But then, you know, I ended up going on a couple dates with her because, you know, I started talking to her about her cat. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, the very fact that you guys were on, you know, social media linked together, like for a while and like talked naturally, I'm pretty sure that helped break the ice because she wasn't like, oh, here's just a creep messaging me just to fuck or whatever. It's like an actual genuine interaction. And she probably had a better idea of who you were as a result of seeing your social media for a while. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the number one thing you have to do here is don't respond to every like don't like every picture. Don't comment on every picture in hopes of, of like, you know, in hopes of them seeing that and being like, oh, this guy's into me. It's like, look, mm-hmm. she knows you're into her. You know what I mean? You follow her on Instagram. Most people aren't following 
people they don't find unattractive or find unattractive off Tinder on Instagram. No one's like, yeah. Ooh, don't like the look of that. I would love to see more. Also like a stranger. Yeah. You know, people follow their friends who I'm sure they don't find attractive, but yeah, like, of course. you know, if you're a complete stranger and someone's following you and you know, you're not like a super successful, amazing sex and dating podcast, obviously it's cause they find you hot. In fact, most like, you know, quote unquote, hot girls on Tinder, their profiles are just their Instagram. Mm-hmm. I would say like nine out of 10, nine out of tens. No. Um, yeah. Oh God. You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of the like women that most people would be like, damn, uh, their, their thing is literally just their Instagram handle. And mm-hmm. I assume it's just fishing for follows. Yeah. So again, I think if they have it provided and even linked, if you're chill and you're cool and like, I mean that at the start, in the middle and at the end, almost more especially, fuck it. It's fine. Here's how I would break it down. Mm-hmm. I would say if it's on their, like written explicitly on their Instagram follow, or page, I think it's perfectly fine to follow. Yep. If it's just integrated on their profile, I think it's okay to follow if you guys have matched and talked. Mm-hmm. And then if it's not listed anywhere, don't hunt them down. Yeah, don't hunt them down at all. Like, come on. Ever. But no matter what, when you reach out, like, that's, I think, the most important part. Apart from maybe don't hunt them down. That could be the most important part. Yeah. It needs to be something that you both connect on. So, like, if she posts a bunch of bullshit stories of, like, you know, her doing her makeup, whatever. But if eventually she posts a picture of, like, your favorite bar. What's wrong with makeup? Hey, if you're super into makeup, that's fine. (laughs) Um, But, like, you know, she posts a picture at your favorite bar drinking your favorite beer. That's something you can connect over. That's yeah. that's a that's a prime opportunity to connect. But like if you're just like looks good, makeup looks great, you look beautiful today. That means nothing because I promise you there's 19 other dudes doing the same thing. Yeah. So just be fucking chill. But yeah, no, yeah, I think you're in the right here, question asker. It's working out if it's led to dates and sexes. Yeah. Okay, this one is I'm going to try to remove some stuff, specifically ages and like genders because they there's a lot of players in here and I think it's going to be very confusing. Okay. So if you get confused following the the plot a little bit, just stop me and I will I will clarify. I'm sure I will. Continue. My pregnant wife keeps comparing how I'm handling her pregnancy to how her brother-in-law is treating her stepsisters, and I finally reached my boiling point. Now I'm having or now I'm being given the silent treatment. My wife and I have been married for 5 years. We have one son and are currently expecting our second. My wife has three sisters, two stepsisters, Leah and Grace, and a biological sister, Emma. Her stepsister, Leah, is also pregnant and expecting her first child. My wife is five months pregnant, and I think Leah is in her sixth month. My wife, my, or my wife isn't exactly close to Leah. So my, we wife. See, my wife. My uh, wife. <laughs> so we only see her and her husband, Luca, at family events. Through the grapevine, a.k.a. Grace and Emma, which are her two sisters, we find out Luca took Leah on a fancy island vacation to celebrate her pregnancy. Ever since, my wife has been incredibly interested and jealous in the things Luca does for his wife's pregnancy. He has done some really over-the-top things, which my wife thinks I should do for her, even though she's, even though they're just not realistic for us. She's constantly picking fights with me and making it seem like whatever I do for her isn't good enough or that I don't care enough about our baby. I've tried suggesting she stop asking Grace and Emma for updates on Leah, but she's obsessed with finding out about her life. I finally reached my boiling point yesterday. We had a family dinner at her parents' house. Uh, While there, Leah made a comment about craving brownies constantly. The parents didn't have any, so Luca went to buy some. On the drive home, my wife kept berating me for not doing the bare minimum and getting her breadsticks, even though she didn't mention craving them until that moment. I offered to go pick some up on her way home, but she refused, claiming it wasn't romantic if I didn't do it without having to ask. She then brought up how amazing their nursery looks and how I should have hired a professional to do ours. The whole drive home, she kept going on and on about how great of a dad Luca is going to be and how Leah is lucky to have him. I tried to be patient because she's pregnant, but I finally snapped and told her maybe Luca does all these things. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) I I finally snapped and told her maybe Luca does all these things for for his wife because she isn't constantly bitching at him. He doesn't need advice. (laughs) He's nailing it. (laughs) My wife hasn't spoke to me since, even though I've apologized multiple times. How do I fix this? Oh, man. The the question is, how do I fix this and not... (laughs) All the other shit? Yeah. Because this situation is fucking shit. Yep. This, well, firstly, I, I think we can all agree he should have been, uh, you know, he should have read her mind and gotten the breadsticks. If he yep. hasn't developed those those psych- psychic powers yet, like, what's he even doing having children? What's the point of, yeah, you already have a kid, and you're telling me you can't read your wife's pregnancy cravings? <laughs> You know, the um, things that are known for being completely uncharacteristic to what the person usually likes. 
yeah that like that's so unfair um and especially like just like you should never compare your relationship to somebody else's yeah. kind of like how you shouldn't really compare your life to somebody else's mm-hmm. um and even if you do it's like it should be a like bettering yourself thing not a i want that person to be more like that person like if you see someone you're like damn they're working out and like they're getting fit and they're getting healthy and like you know they're really putting in the work like i should fucking do that like sure if you want to do that and you want to like by all means make it positive don't get jealous and beat yourself up or anything like that but you can't just be like oh damn look at that person they're working out and they're getting fit why don't you fucking do that like that's a shitty thing to do all the things from the wife's perspective or like from what she's doing from what i could see it seems pretty shitty it seems really unfair because again it's like a fucking tropical vacation doesn't mean you care about the baby more or less. A lot of people don't have tropical vacations for their pregnant wives and manage to be wonderful fucking parents. So, like, even just equating those two is absolutely batshit. It's also important to note that, like, like the guy said, it's like, it's not realistic for us. It's like, people Mm. have, like, there are so many variables in relationships, as you mentioned earlier, where it's like, you shouldn't be comparing what one partner is doing for another partner in other relationships because it's like you have no idea if that person comes for money you have no mm-hmm. idea what they do for work you have no idea like their financial status you have no idea what their like work situation is it's like a lot of people can't just fuck off and go on vacation whenever they want mm-hmm. because not even like a money thing but even just a work like they have commitments mm-hmm. this guy might be a fucking you know an influencer or a you know a, an entrepreneur and he owns his own business and can just bounce whenever he wants he might have a wildly successful sex and dating advice podcast and it's just rolling in the money yeah i this mean is like- sarcasm <laughs> <laughs> um but on top of that like again hello irony it's like you not doing this when it's not appropriate if you do that is you caring for this baby because guess what if you blow all your fucking money on a tropical vacation and then have a baby you can't look after You've done fucked up. I think that's the solution. In a roundabout way, I think you need to like sit down. At, like, have you all you've all it seems to mention in the question is you talk to her sisters about not sharing details of Luca's or Leah's pregnancy, but you haven't talked to your wife. Yeah, I think like talking to her and like maybe if you know, you know let's say the five things that that they've talked about, like the professional thing, the wedding, like the cravings. You could be like, look, I am assuming professional like bedroom and the tropical va- vacation. Maybe it's, maybe it is a money thing and that's fine. Mm-hmm. You like, look, I get that you want these. Where are we going to get the money for this? Like it, I'm thinking realistically here, like uh, discuss it. And with the craving thing, be like, look, I get that you're upset, but at the same time, I can't read your mind. You didn't tell me these things. And like, you're saying it's not romantic once you've told me this, but at the same time, I can't know until you've told me like there, there is no middle ground here. So we need to work it out and like talk and let her know how you're feeling, because maybe it's you've been spending too long being kind to her because she's pregnant to the point where like she doesn't know how you feel about the situation and how she feels is just kind of like snowballed and kept getting worse. You well, know, the funny thing about the cravings is like you mentioned specifically that Leah was constantly talking about how much she wanted yeah. brownies. So like, yes. Did she ask Luca to go and get her brownies? No, but she did talk about brownies nonstop. And I think anyone would like, I'm sure the same thing where if your wife was going on and on about something, you might have offered maybe not to like run out of the dinner. Cause also I think that's kind of rude. Yeah. I think he's simping a little hard. Um, <laughs> It, it also like I don't know there there just seems to be like anytime something seems too big too good to be true there's usually like underlying factors of it so I don't know if there's like a guilt thing going on I like who knows what's going on in the relationship uh, also, which is another reason not to compare yourself to the relationship for all we know Luca cheated on mm-hmm. you know Leah and now is trying to do you know be best husband TM mm-hmm. to make or- up for it. Maybe Leah is massively abusive and is just like, I want these things. I need these things. And he's terrified not to get them for her. You know what I mean? We literally know nothing. And on top of that, I would like, like, we live in a day and age where like, especially, I feel like parents do this a lot. We all fucking do it. But like with social media, there's this thing where you always try to present your life as like Mm -hmm. perfect and stylish and stylized. And like, I've seen people who are parents and like, they have these almost like, almost like influencer worthy instagrams like that super are so curated highly curated and like everything's designer and it's like they present their life like it's this beautiful like diorama of like perfect parenthood and then you hang out with them and you're like that's not what your life is at all you're covered in paint and jam and like your kids fucking screaming and punching a wall and eating bugs 
you know, but no one's fucking videoing that. No one's putting a sepia filter over their child, just like mushing worms into their eyeballs. So it's like you you're looking at this fiction and you're thinking that that fiction is truth. Again, it's like looking at rom-coms or porn and being like, yep, that's reality. I very much doubt things are as perfect as they seem. First, I think you need to sit down and maybe do one more apology because calling your pregnant wife a bitch. Oh, yeah. is- you know, like saying that it's like, look, you didn't say it out of nowhere. There was, wasn't like there was no reason for you to say the things you said. It, is it still a shitty thing to say? Yes. You know? Yeah. So like we get where you're coming from, but you got to know you handled that bad. Yeah. I, and like, I, th- I think he does. I think he's well aware yeah, that that's, yeah. That he fucked up and it probably you know. knew it immediately. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. So make sure you do apologize and don't half ass it, you know, straight up own that you, you were being shitty. But at the same time, don't back down on the fact that she is also being shitty. The apology needs to come with an explanation. You can't mm-hmm. just be like, I'm sorry, I called you a bitch. It's like, I'm sorry, I called you a bitch, but I was at my breaking point because you've constantly compared me to this other man mm-hmm. and are having such unrealistic expectations from us financially us in terms of our commitments and in terms of like i can't read your mind if you wanted breadsticks there's no way of me knowing this and like just put it on the table and be like i i will happily if you're craving fucking you know pickles and rocky road ice cream at four in the morning just tell me i will happily go out and run and grab these things for you even then let's be fair like should you be beholden to well i'm being hyperbolic but i know know. but i i feel like there's a lot of and again i'm not a person dealing with a oh I've caught. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, it took a it took a big gulp and it went down the wrong way. And then, did you did you like get a water gun and shoot it into your mouth? It was like <laughs> no, the that weirdest, was, wettest sound following that was by me like spitting the water back at the glass. Oh like joke. <laughs> you're not like <laughs> any of this. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Um, it's just cause I'm so funny. Um, I, I don't have a pregnant person in my life that I have to look after, thankfully. And like, I don't know, but I feel like there's almost this unfair, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, expectation that's like, as the husband, you go and you do everything, you know, four in the morning, I want ice cream. You fucking run to the shop and you get ice cream. I feel like you doing that is a very nice thing. I don't know if it's something you should be held to. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I, my point was just like, you know, was hyperbolic and you're absolutely right. You're not beholden to everyone's, you know, whims and, and fancies. Mm-hmm. Um, but like show that you are eager to, you know, please. And, and, and like that you do, you are there as a supportive partner, mm-hmm. but in the facet that you are capable, like you as a couple and you as a human being are capable of doing one, you can't read minds that like, it's just an unrealistic expectation. And you need to be set that. Like, I think that's the most bullshit thing of being like, you got upset that I didn't know you wanted breadsticks, despite the fact that you never told me bread, you wanted mm-hmm. breadsticks. How would I know this? If you could tell me how I would know this, then, you know, and, and you make a good point, then I'll apologize. And I should have gotten it or, you know, but like to to expect me to be able to read your mind and know exact and anticipate every desire you have is unrealistic, whether you're pregnant or not. Mm-hmm. But also to say like you don't care about the baby and like that you're you know you're kind of almost like insinuating that you're not going to be a good father because you're saying oh this person does this they're going to be a good father. Like mm-hmm. those are really fucking hurtful, shitty things to say as well. Like pretty damn offensive and pretty awful, you know. But I think. Uh, Probably worse than being like, oh, they're not bitching at him because like that's a pretty generic insult. You know what I mean? It's almost it's almost not even offensive in a sense because it's just like look at a cliche someone's going to say about their wife on TV. Whereas like looking at someone being like, you are not, you don't care about the baby. You are not going to be a good father. Those yeah. are horrible things to say. Mm-hmm. Either way, you guys need to fucking talk. You need to take the like issues one by one and explain, you know, are they possible? Are they not possible? If they are, why are you not doing them? If they aren't, why are you, do you know, etc. And on top of that, just be like, let them know how they're making you feel. Apologize for the shitty thing you said and like work through this. I'm sure hormones are playing a part. But as we've said before, you don't get to just be like, oh, I got my hormones. I'm going to be an asshole. So good luck. But you really got to like sit down and fucking talk this shit out. All right. You ready? Uh, let's go into seduction. This is by like my turkey cold. Stop taking the fun out of game. A little bit about me. 23 years old, been obsessed with game slash seduction since I was 18. Last year before the pandemic, I met a beautiful professional ballerina and knew that's who I wanted to date early on. 
Been in an awesome relationship since then, and while being with one girl was an adjustment earlier on, love is a pretty cool feeling. When I was 18, I was 5'8", and weighed between 130 and 135 pounds. I'm 23, still 5'8", and maybe 140 pounds. Going to the gym is awesome, the few weeks I tried, but I haven't loved it like I loved learning game. Game is about exploring personal freedom. The freedom to say whatever you want to a person that you may or may not see ever again. That sounds fun to me. Every night you go out, you have the opportunity to express yourself however you want, and that can result in a lot of creative ideas. Don't tie yourself down what you think society thinks you should say or do. I used to help write Tinder messages for my friends. When I showed them the message, they'd laugh at the idea of someone saying such a thing. Regardless of the outcome, if you can message a girl and laugh at the conversation, you're having more fun than 95% of the guys out there. Walk up to a girl and speak a different language. Fake a terrible British accent. Talk about your future together as husband and wife. I've seen all of these work. Or whatever sounds fun to you. This is your pickup journey. Make some awesome memories and put in the work. It's absolutely worth it. I hate to say it, there are little nuggets, little tiny nuggets of of things I agree with in there wrapped <laughs> in uh, uh, loose poop, loose stool. Yeah, just like a big a big wet turd coating. Yeah. Um, th- the the thing that really stood up for me where I was like, okay, that, that actually is a good point is the make sure you're having fun. Like if you're trying to flirt with someone, make sure you're having fun. Don't take it too seriously. Mm-hmm. Like no, nothing sucks more than like going in and being like pickup mode activate because people sense that a fucking mile away. We talk mm-hmm. about it all the time, like pickup lines and shit like that. If you're going and like you're having fun, then you're probably going to exude a, a pretty cool aura of, of you and, and be more attractive because of that. However, mm-hmm. if you having fun is like if you're going to like go over there and, and be like Mr. Meme 3000 and be like, hey, your shoes are stupid and be like, hey, I just, you know, run back to your buddy and be like, yeah, I told her his shoes were stupid and you all have a good laugh. It's like, no, that's that sucks. You're being a shitty person. A hundred percent. I feel I, I totally agree with you. Should have fun. It almost seems positive. Yet at the same time, the whole like, fuck what society thinks you should say or do. Society's probably telling them not to be a fucking asshole. And for him, it's like, once you're having fun, that's all that matters. That's like, well, no, because there is another person. person, Yes. And their fun (laughs) and their safety and their comfort is massively important. And I think this person is upset that other people might consider that. You can't go and say whatever the fuck you want to somebody. No. Because you could be cruel. You could be creepy. You could be weird. And it doesn't matter if you're having fun. They're not having fun. Yeah. And I feel like he's very much on the, oh, society's trying to ruin this for us. We can do whatever we want camp. And I think that's absolute bullshit. Yeah. I mean, like that's, I think that's the the crux of it is they're upset that people are now being socially conscious. And, and for what you're telling me of how seduction is rolling, uh, it seems like seduction is also kind of like cluing into the fact that the best way to attract women is to treat them like human beings. Uh, yeah, you know what? We had, remember, like, one or two decent questions in the past two weeks where the comments were all right. And this week, I had a question I was going to bring, and the mods removed it and dissected it and basically told the person all the ways they were wrong and were really positive. So, seduction might be having a turnaround, guys. And this is, like, this is great. This is the kind of, like, this is what I think... It, the the initial pu- pushback and the initial, like, oh, you know, betas and all that, it's like, no, no, like, you are just insecure because you know what you're doing is shitty Mm -hmm. and you're worried that times are a change and you know what i mean it's like the pushback of any sort of social progress we are now entering a a realm where we're like you can realize that like going out and flirting hasn't changed your tactics might because you're now realizing that like oh women are allowed to to flirt back and women are human beings and women are you know their their state of being is also very important to your end game whatever it may be the funny thing about game is women were never included in the equation until the end you know what i mean it was always like plus this plus this plus this equals women and -hmm. it's like women weren't the, the prize you know what i mean like women need to be included in the the equation of equals you know romance or whatever the you know the the goal is because like they're an active participant in social interactions yeah the just the like complete removal of women as an entity in in most of the like pickup bullshit is is just baffling you know and like the funny thing is whenever you talk like whenever anyone says anything like that the old line of you don't ask a fish how to go like a fisherman doesn't ask a fish how to catch them or some bullshit. And it's like, one, you're reducing women to fucking fish and you to like a hunter and like fish, like fishermen trick people and then, 
or they f- trick fish and then spear them through the fucking mouth brutally, haul them out of the water till they choke on air and cut them up and eat them. This is a terrible yeah. analogy. Niall, sometimes they hit them really hard against the boat. That's true. And they take pictures with their corpse. Like, this is all awful. Um, but on top of that, if you could talk to a fish, even if you wanted to get this awful analogy going, you could be like, hey, which one of these lures is most attractive to you? And they'd be like, oh, that one. I'd munch the shit out of that. So it would actually be really helpful. So it's just it batch it in general. Anyway, there is like they say personal freedom to say whatever you want to a person that you may or may not ever see again. Sounds fun to me. Yeah, but it might not be fun for them. And if you're not taking their fun into account, you're probably a shitty person. You're definitely shit at picking people up. Yeah. So like by all means have fun. By all means get goofy with it if you want, although don't be weird. If you aren't considering the other person's feelings and safety and comfort, you're an asshole and you're doing it wrong. All right, I'm going to hit you with a, a quick one. In my dream, I would walk a thousand oh miles to my ex's house, but never see him, only to see his shadow. And that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> I think I miss him, but it's not worth seeing him. And also no self-respect to myself. My body has came a long way from healing. People, <laughs> I feel like that sentence doesn't mean what she thinks it means. Well, to be fair, his body came a long way from healing too, because he was at one point dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I think he's he's winning that race. People make one stupid mistake and their life is ruined. I know why he was doing this. He has feelings for me, like how I have feelings for him. But we don't belong together. We want different things. And sadly, we are different people. He thinks I'll never understand why and that he can fool me. But truthfully, he can't fool me anymore. He doesn't want us to last. I didn't touch his heart and he didn't touch mine either. I'm starting to think I can want anyone to last. It doesn't have to be him. I don't think I love him deeply as I wouldn't take a bullet for him. I wouldn't give him any money. I wouldn't help him if he was in need. If he asked me for help, I wouldn't do it. Even if his life is in danger, even if he was about to die, I would actually want to watch him die and make sure he does. I think I actually hate him. (laughs) I just have mild affections for him. I think these emotions will go away with time. I I don't think you can say you have mild affection for someone if you would not only not help them if they were dying, but wants to watch them die. And ensure that he did, in fact, die. Well, you would have to stay around to make sure with this slippery bastard. Death's tried to get him before, and this he just walked true. right back out. This is um, very, very true. Maybe she just wants to watch him die because, she, you know, w- how often do we get to watch someone immortal, you know, get cut in half or whatever? And then, yeah, reform. And yeah, she knows, like, it, it's like someone else getting a cold in a few days, he's fine. He just needs some hot chicken soup. (laughs) After being run down by a car. I believe he was hit by a car and died. Man, how recent was this? This is, this was uh, fairly recent. She's discovered the breakup and unsent letter subcategory of of Reddit. So she's been writing a lot of like, and to be fair, the unsent letters uh, do hit, hit like uh, beat poetry. So she's okay. she's sitting her stride there, and let me tell you, people are still not reading it. Has so, she has she found like the people that analyze dreams read it? Because I feel like she's a fucking gold mine for that. I'm pretty sure she does post in Dream subreddit. I think she might have been banned because I, <laughs> I think it's pretty clear like when she gets banned because she spams like one subreddit and then never goes back to it. Mm-hmm. So I assume. The mods are just like, okay, we've heard the fucking, your ex gave you an STI, you love your ex, but you hate your ex, he might be bisexual, and, you know, mm-hmm. now you have a dream about being in a pool. Yeah. Um, also, I'm not sure a lot of Reddits are chill what you want wishing death upon people. <laughs> Apparently, the breakup subreddit is fine with it. Remember when we got banned from the sex Reddit? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, this is wild. For those who don't know what the fuck we've been talking about for the last five minutes, uh, this is the ongoing saga of of better betch who is just regaling us with her fever dream relationship analysis i guess yep uh it's it's a fucking wild saga it is a woman who has uh, admittedly gone through some hardships how much Mm -hmm. of it is real i have no idea because literally everything she says is different in every post other than like you know the the staples of she has a a terrible ex-boyfriend who was stinky Mm -hmm. gave her a disease (laughs) and stinky and immortal and now she runs the gamut of hating him, realizing she'll never be with him, and maybe having feelings for him. Mm-hmm. To be fair, hate is a feeling, so cool. Yeah, yeah. Mild affection. This is by Sarda12. 
This girl put her legs up on my chair's rest. I jokingly grabbed her legs and threw them off. Then she smiled at me and put her legs back up. Is she flirting? Yeah, I guess, maybe. Like, I think it depends on what age you are. (laughs) I think if you are in, like, junior high or high school, yeah, this could be flirting. And, like, you know, for some reason, the younger you are, like, the main... The main flirtation tactic we have is to annoy. Mm-hmm. And or proximity. You know, yeah. what I mean? just getting any way near you in, in some fashion. And this is both. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, there's really no way of knowing anything other than. But, like, if she smiles when you threw her feet off and isn't upset or injured, then, yeah, one can assume that, like, maybe she liked the attention. I feel like we need to know who this girl is to you and what kind of smile. Like, was it like a fuck you smile? Like, mm, oh, yeah, you think you can do that? Putting them right back up. Try me, motherfucker. Or was it like a mm, he he he? Yeah. And they put them back up, you know? Is this your friend? No. Okay. Is it a stranger? In that scenario now, which one do you think is more flirty? Uh, Definitely the try me again, motherfucker. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's just a (laughs) prop gun she's she's pulling out. There's something about, like, antagonistic women. And and I don't mean, like, women who are. (laughs) Why didn't uh, you read my fucking breadcrumb mind? Or breadstick mind. <laughs> Not women who are actively telling me to go, but like women who are like, you know, a bit a bit fighty that like immediately drags my attention. Strange. I like them spooky and feisty. It's true. That's why you love me so much. It's true. It's, it's highly possible that she's flirting, but guess what? Flirting and connections and all that is not as simple as you being able to give us four sentences or three sentences and then one question and us be able to like, yep. It's likely. Hey, it's a good it's a good thing if she's smiling and you guys are being playful. At the very least, things are positive. Just, you know, be chill and go for it eventually, I guess. Like I, there's you could transition any number of ways out of foot rest territory to be like, hey, do you want to grab a drink? So we're facing each other and that way you can't put your you know feet up on my chair. Mm-hmm. You know, depending again, it could be super creepy. You could, like you, you gotta gauge the situation yourself but like if she wants your chair you could be like we could share it you know or like you give her the chair and then you put her feet your feet up on her like be playful but the main part is be chill you know what i mean if you get really weird i can only imagine that this happened and he was like <gasps> i turned around you start texting on the phone and she's just like oh hello yeah i think you definitely need to initiate some sort of communication with her other than like this is a fun like you know playful introduction this is your meet cute but you mm-hmm. definitely need to sort of like talk to her about anything first before <laughs> making a move. I think like, again, yeah. we don't know if this is, you know, a classmate you've been in school with all year or, you know, your entire life. We don't know anything about her mm-hmm. or you really, but I think like, I think it'd be funny is if like, you know, you get to class a little early and take her seat in the next day. You know what I mean? Be like, what are you going to do? And the thing is like flirting is a, an ongoing process. You're, you know, it's not like this happens. You're like, shit, she's flirting. Move now. Like, it's usually a bunch of different things. It's like, so far, all we know is that things are somewhat positive. So it's like, cool, roll with it. Be positive and playful back. Be, again, I can't stress this enough. Be chill. And like, hopefully things will progress. If she puts your her feet up on your chair again, throw out the fucking window. You gave her a warning. Yeah, yeah. Like, but just her legs. Yeah. All right. Tinder time. Tinder time. At the end of the episode, we like to look through online dating, peruse it, and find profiles that either work or don't work. And we pick apart, find the red flags, and to hopefully teach you how to have a better online dating experience. This is, this is Jessica. Okay. Before I begin, I don't like being used as bait in social movements. Markle's second book, second baby, is not Harry's. I wrote one ebook called Beep on Amazon Kindle. I'm also interested in cyber policy history, independent and related to other fields and its future. I have an Instagram named Beep about cybersecurity. Not traveling too much. However, I like looking at people's profiles to see what everyone is up to around the world and what they are doing. Kiss emoji. Super into like spy stuff, huh? I guess, yeah. Cybersecurity. Also, I like to watch everyone and know what they're doing. Also creepy? some wild claims about Meghan Markle. Yeah, how many babies do they have? Is that is the second one the most recent one? Is she pregnant with number so. two? I don't know. I, I, I don't really know, but either way, it's like, I'm pretty sure we would have heard if it was not Harry, so how is she privy to this information? I, the cybersecurity now? Are you not paying attention? Mm-hmm. I don't like being used as bait in social movements. That's how she opens it, right? Yeah, it's powerful. The, like, the whole thing is, at first I thought... She was making like a Harry Potter reference and was like spilling something 
like fan theory. But no, to just assume that the royal family, I, I would believe it. Like, I, it, there's nothing to not believe there. You know what I mean? Like, who fucking cares? Um, but like, for that to make your Tinder profile? Yeah, I don't even know what that means. But like, I don't, how often I don't has know, this happened? What would you talk about on a date with this person? Like, it, that's my thing. Is like, I don't know what to say to this person other than like, uh huh. Oh yeah. Wow, crazy. Like, that's the kind of, like, she would get the, like, rambling person at the end of my bar that I'm pretending to make drinks or, like, Mm -hmm. you know, punch things in so that I don't have to actively engage with her. Which makes me not want to go on a date with you. It also just seems like a a shotgun blast of unrelated sentences and things that, like, to move from, like, I don't like being used as bait in social movements. Not really sure what you mean by that. Not sure why it's here, but okay. Markle's second baby is not Harry's. What?! I wrote an ebook. Okay, cool. I like cyber policy. All right. Here's my Instagram. Okay, not traveling. Sure, but I like looking at people who are traveling. What? Like, I don't know anything about you apart from the fact that it's hard for you to make a coherent post. This is like Here's a one thing. for me. The thing is, I think I know too much about her, and none of it is good. I know too much, none of it's good, and I don't know enough. All at the same time. Yeah, I'm giving it a one, too. It's a one. Um, this is Angie. Mexican. Intelligent. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I assume they meant to say intelligent, and I also assume so too. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, I liked it. Or damn. Or do you Intelli- think it's- I looked up intelligent, and it's an international intelligence network. Intellinet. Mm-hmm. I mean, this mm-hmm. could be connected to Jessica. Yeah. Right. Jessica and her have like a fucking cyber. Oh my god, we've linked the dots. They're gonna come assassinate us now fuck well first okay hold on welcome to uh royal buzz where we talk about how Meghan markle's kid isn't harry's yeah so guys we've got the load and we've got the scoop um we've done the paternity test visually anyone and- who claims this is correct mm-hmm. and certainly doesn't need to kill us uh and she's getting a 10 because this is irony at its finest is that just it that the whole that, post that's the whole thing fuck yeah that's incredible and i can only hope it's legit. So I'm only going to read out their name. Okay. Horse Girl. Nice. I'm going to give that a zero. That's a 10 for now. It's just a zero. Is there is there a profile? Uh, the Link? profile is cut off. The person who sent this in, they knew what I, they knew what I like and dislike. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, this is Otis. When people give me compliments, I feel like a vending machine trying to accept a wrinkly dollar. And it's just really frustrating for everyone involved. Things I enjoy. Binge watching TV, food, food, and more food, camping, traveling, and finding fault with humanity. Everyone says dogs love you unconditionally, but I'm pretty sure my dog hates me. Is finding a cuddle buddy to go away to the cottage with and watch movies while stuffing our faces really too much to ask for? I will give this a nine. I really like it. I think it's very funny. Um, the compliments and wrinkly dollar bill. It's great. I see you've fallen for Otis's trap. The dog Jeez. line. The dog line is a clear indicator that he is either one, a terrible person, two, a ghost. Mm -hmm. Dogs don't hate anyone. Uh, Well, Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I don't know what kind of dog it is. If it's a little shitty dog, like a chihuahua or something, then those things hate everything. Those things don't have Mm -hmm. the capability to love. But if it's anything else... He's just let loose that he's undead. Yeah, he's either either a specter, a haunt... Mm -hmm. A revenant, if you will. A phantasm. A ghoul. A... Did I say specter already? Yes. Fuck. I ruined it. Well, you win. You did. Yeah, or or a, like a terrible person. Like those are the only two people dogs hate. Con- on the contrary, is he doing a clever? Because he's got a good profile, but he's got this irresistible hook. Because I need to know what the fuck's going on here. And it's like all that's really good. And then there's this one inflammatory thing that makes you want to slap the man in the face. So it's like you almost have to reach out. And then he's got this backbone of positivity aside from that. So That's like true. he goes, why the fuck's your dog hate you? And you go, oh, I'm joking. And he sends you a cute picture and boom, you've made contact. You've been reeled in. The fisherman has got the fish and soon he'll be posing with your corpse. That's a good point because to be fair, the, the first message that I would send to him would be about like, like you need to tell me why your dog hates you. Mm-hmm. you know, and like just- if, if he just gives you any kind of like, uh, you know, he's just a grump or like a cute story or like something to, to get rid of that worry that he's some kind of ghoul. Then things are good and you've been drawn in 
I think this might be a masterful, masterful profile. It's a very good profile. Unless the answer to that question is, oh, my dog barks at me all the time. And when it Mm -hmm. tries to snap at me and bite me, my incorporeal form won't let him grapple me. And therefore, it just further infuriates him. Yeah. Or like, you know, he says that, no, my dog legit hates me. And then says it's like a golden retriever or something. And you're like, those dogs are incapable of hate. But nine, I'm giving them the nine. Maybe yeah, even the 10, maybe even the 11. I don't know. I think it's a, actually maybe the perfect profile. It's it's. I think it's certainly one of the best we've we've had here. And I'm, I'm going to give it a 9 as well because I need to know how the dog thing plays out. It's funny. It flows well. You know a lot about this person. The cottage cuddle buddy thing is great. But on top of that, and I think this is maybe important, it has a very contentious issue in the middle that you need resolved. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's pretty good, actually. Good job. Yeah, it gives a lot of flavor of who he is and then also a hook for a first message. Yeah. And that's that's good. You did it, Otis. Although he spells his name O-T-U-S. Mm, yeah, it's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> now, who cares? Fuck it. Well, guys, thank you for being here. You might have seen us post about having the longest episode ever uh, last week and then been surprised when it wasn't the longest episode ever. We were able to cut an entire extra episode from that episode. Yeah, so we got, we, we got one in the back pocket. Who knows? We, we have some plans. We might do something with it. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. I think is the podcast awards announced this week. Uh, I believe uh, voting closes on the 29th, which when this comes out, will be too late. So thank you to everybody who did vote. If you did and who you know supported us and, and sent us positive messages about it and like the posts and all that shit. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. It would be really cool if we did win something, but it is quite literally an honor to be nominated because it was, what, top five out of a thousand? I don't know. A lot. There are a yeah. lot of podcasts. Um, yeah, Just so uh, once again, thank you very much for, for choosing to spend an hour of your time with us. We couldn't be happier that this is what you've chose to do. Um, we appreciate it. We love you. Um, thanks for listening. If you do enjoy the show, please consider uh, sharing it as the world opens and people are traveling again and, uh, you know, going to work and commuting more. Uh, people are going to need some podcasts to put in their ear holes. Uh, also, as love. horny people are unleashed on the on the unprepared world, hopefully we can help them do it the right way. Yeah, there is a tidal wave of horniness about to sweep the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're here. Jism. We're here. We are the, Jism uh, everywhere. We are uh, we are the levy, right? We are the levy that will hopefully protect you. Is that what levies do? We can Flooding? be your your boy dam. Either way, thank you very much. Um, if you have a question you would like us to answer it prior to the time where everything gets buck wild, uh, please shoot us a message. You can find us at fbuddiespodcast.com. You can hit the contact form. All of our social media is there. Uh, and reach out to us on whatever platform you, you prefer, and we'll get back to you and we'll answer your question as soon as we can. Hell yeah. Thank you to Josh Eagle and the Harvest Cities for the song Paper Stars. Now you ready for some bad sex writing? Now I'm very sad because this is by a writer I like and a book series I like. But you know what? One of the only criticisms I could levy against it is that his treatment of women, not great. She pushed back her asphalt colored hair with one hand and gave me a look of pure calculation. Then she simply crossed her legs so that the cut of her dress left one pale leg bare to mid thigh. A subtle motion of her back thrust out her young, firm breasts so that their tips pressed visibly against the fabric. Of course, Mr. Dresden, I'm sure we can do business. The look she gave me was direct, sensual, and willing. Nipple erection on command. Now that's method action. Me- method acting. As we all know, women can just, like, on command, mentally harden their nipples uh, to do better business with men. I mean, how do you think people get a, women get out of driving tickets? It's true. It's, just, it's true. I've been trying to practice my own nipple hardening on command, and it's just not working. I've actually been fired from so many bars for giving away free shit to women because they're just like, boop. Oh, of there course. Yeah. There it is. Mm-hmm. Hard nipples. Give me free drinks. So this is Jim Butcher's Dresden Files. And Jim, come on, man. I don't want to see you in this list. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Dave Miller. And I'm Niall Spain. We've been your fuck buddies. No grand gestures this week. None. None.